Hi, welcome to Team Willie Sheep Reviews and welcome back. I hope the lockdown is not taking its toll. Right. So this is my where most of my soldering happens, believe it or not. And this is the Antex 690D soldering station. It is expensive. There's a cheaper version of it, but this is good. Doesn't the only thing I struggle with is this is crap that fell out of there it fell on the floor one day and snapped there so get it about that and then i don't didn't really want to pay stupid money to get a replacement it's like a, a beaker like this but it's fragile and I, I struggle i just want that to go thump in the hole this bit of wire at the back is horrible to hook because you've got to get the iron in and hook it underneath there i don't like it this is why you might be better off something like that something like that which is a spring arrangement where you can just drop the iron in it might be a better idea and what i might do is put that spring into that base what i do like is it's got a nice thick sponge so slightly wet sponge what i use is an old uh, washing up liquid bottle which i've cleaned out and i just put water in there and then I just squirt a bit in there, put it to one side. <laughs> Tip of the day. This is called, called Tip Restorer. This is quite expensive. What happens, because i got solder on it now, but if it starts to go black and it no longer takes solder and you're forever messing around with it. So this is, this is like a little tub of like paste. Never solder while wearing shorts. Another tip for the day. Because you drip solder onto your leg and oh! oh it hurts, man. So don't solder in shorts. Make sure you're wearing some good denims. Clean it. To revive the tip, you just put the tip in the paste. And that's it. Good as new. Crack on with the soldering. So, soldering. I've got a little pink brush. And I've cut the, the brush back so the little stumps. As when I'm doing a bit of soldering, I add a little bit of flux to the brush and then I will just simply paint a, a thin smear of flux onto the connection this is also worth his weight this is a, a glass brush see these glass little glass fibers they, they are so you, it looks like a like a fat felt pen with no ink and when you have the solder pads that need soldering and they you look at them and you're thinking they're a little bit dull they should be bright sparkling gold so i'll just simply clean them off with the with this just use it like a little brush clean it off and they're nice bright shiny gold pads again then i add a little bit of flux a little bit of flux on on the tip of the brush just paint it on very thin when you go in there with solder the solder will immediately stick and flow to all areas of the pad because it's clean and it's got flux on it. So the solder will flow quite nice onto there. So you're not fighting and dabbing and trying to get the solder to stick to the pad. It'll actually form quite nicely. We'll do an exercise where we will join the cable. You can see some people will use the side cutters and strip a bit back. You can also, if you've got a, a knife blade, gently score the wire just by rolling it over the sharp edge and that gives a nice obviously you can't you don't want to be cutting into it you only want to, to, to score the PVC outer not the wires inside you score the wires and they'll snap so some people I've seen put them together twisting them and soldering them like that and then doing a the joint and it's it's like so it's okay but then you've got the stresses on the bottom of the connection, well, that joint is fine, but where they actually the wires are bending 90 degrees, that's where they're going to start to break down in time. But the way I've always been taught, just add a bit of flux to the wire, and then you do an exercise, then which is called tinning. As you can see, the copper has absorbed the solder within it and this one's already done I'll just add a little bit like I said you can add a little bit of flux 
would be a good measure. You simply make clean them, clean the tip. Always use a clean tip. Add a little bit of solder, and then simply offer up the wire so that they're parallel with each other, and then introduce the iron. And you will then have the two wires up against each other and soldered and that's a good solid connection you can pull that the wires are not bent 90 degrees they're still straight so that has got a lot of strength and of course where the wire is moving now it's not flexing on any joints because it's staying solid and it's actually quite a strong joint so that would take some some good force And this is what a lot of people do so then now the wire is actually 90 degrees up to that joint and oh now that just snapped off so that one hasn't snapped until i give it a ridiculous and that's actually snapped the cable not the joint so that was actually quite a good exercise doing a joint where the cables are linked that way was extremely strong but whereas I twisted the wires snapped easy so twisting them and soldering them if there's any movement or any tension on them forget it that parallel solder means the surface area the full length is is making connection so you've got good connectivity and that's almost as good as the original cable. There'd be low losses across there. Whereas the one where you're twisting and joining, immediately the cable's flexed it, flexing 90 degrees, which means it can break easier. So after you finish soldering, just clean the tip of any debris or any corrosives, add a little bit of solder, turn it off. And job's a good one so let's go back to the main bench a couple of little tips for soldering thought i'd keep it simple so what you're doing in lockdown i've been given this to refurbish it's a bit of a it's a bit of a wrecker but this is fabulous simon will give me this he actually flew it with an onboard camera and head tracking. He was in the cockpit. And when he wanted to look at what the battery voltage is, he just basically looked down and there was a battery voltage monitor there. And it was good enough to see. So I'm gonna refurbish this and it will fly again. It's been in the sun, it's lost its paint. It's looking a bit shabby. So my mission is to restore that and get it flying again. I've got a big cub. I'd love to do it with it, but I just haven't got the balls to do it. If you look up there, on the rack, you'll see a big cub. That's an almost three meter wingspan. I think it's 2.8, 2.9. It's, it's a big one. And it would be amazing on FPV. So I got lots to do. Coming up, crimping. I did warn you. Hope you enjoyed watching these videos and there's more to come. So these are the informative videos that I'm making and hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching Team Woolly Sheep Reviews. Subscribe, click the link below and the little bell if you so wish. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.